Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look into the Cheat Engine uh, tutorial games section. We're going to be doing the third game. Now my buddy Stephen Chapman has given a great lesson already in regards to this. Let me go ahead and bring this up. And uh, he's went over steps one, two, and three. And uh, he did uh, three uh, a different way where you really don't have to do anything and it just completes the game, which is totally awesome. And I will link that video in the description. So I'm not going over steps one and two because my solutions to those were, would be practically the same as his. So I really recommend that you go watch that. He gives a lot of great advice in game hacking as he does this as well and uh, it's really really good stuff so go give that a watch my hats off to my buddy uh, for that uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to be going directly to step three and the way Stephen had gotten past it he went ahead and was able to get the well done screen without having to do anything but we're going to look at it today where we're going to find like a fly hack where we can get all the lines and we're also going to see if we can find the collision field flag that will let us pass through enemies and you'll see what I mean in just a second so let me go ahead and get situated here and I'll be right back with you okay I also want to apologize about the fan noise that you hear in the background it is hot as Hades here right now and I have no AC so I have to keep fans blowing just keep things cool down a little bit so I apologize about the noise if it's aggravating me well I'm sorry all right so let's go ahead and attach this to the game also um, I may have to break this up in two different parts we may just do the super jump fly hack today and then I'll record for collision field on the next lesson so we can just break it apart in two different lessons because I really need to go over a lot of stuff here and I don't want it to be too long all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of mine you can see all the different things I've got for it. we're gonna talk about all this stuff as well I can't show you the final result dude. let me leave it up for right now let me just get to it should have got to it before I did all this there we go and now this is this is what intrigued me about this you know on the hint section uh, you got the little guy here and it says uh, you got multiple solutions which I've been preaching that forever so is Steven there's always all kind of ways you can achieve uh, the result or the final result many many different ways and I like the fact that you can do that because it really really gets you thinking it gets you thinking outside the box or trying different things uh, gets those neural transmitters up there just vibrating and really stimulates them and I'm telling you that's really good for you and uh, solve problems I, and I love stuff like that but uh, Steven's solution was to go ahead and get to the well done screen bypass all this stuff it's really cool go take a look at it but what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the game itself and it says here you can find multiple solutions find the collision detect with enemies or teleport or fly and you got all that stuff so that's what we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at the teleport and fly and the collision and all that stuff I think what we're going to do today is the uh, the fly hack so we can get all the different all these different barriers uh, to light up and then we can concentrate on the next lesson on the collision field because even if you do get all the lines the enemies will guard the door so you can't get through them so you have to get one you know get through the door by getting rid of your enemies somehow or going through them somehow and basically what I did originally was I looked up their coordinate values and I just sent them off into outer space somewhere and I just walked through the door. But I wanted to go deeper into it and see if I could maybe find that collision. And I finally did and I want to show how I found that. But I'm going to show that in the next lesson. For right now we're going to concentrate on giving this guy some kind of a, a fly hack so we can get all these lines. Actually, Steven has showed how to get all these lines without actually having to go jump on them. And uh, he's already showed that as well. So I'm not going to be uh, going over anything he's already covered in that nature. 
So basically we're just concentrating on the guy himself and that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, right now we're gonna mess around with the jump and the fly on it. And next lesson we're gonna concentrate on walking through these enemies. Okay, so first things first, let me go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm not really getting rid of it, I'm just deleting it. But I'm not saving my cheat table, I'm still gonna have them on my regular cheat table. So first things first, what we want to do is we want to understand basically how most games operate in regards to characters and enemies and things like that. And if you remember from the Back to Basics series, we've already discussed this, and I'll put that link for you in the upper right hand corner. Uh, and I go over the bear core basics and we discuss a lot of things and yeah I threw a lot of information at you and I'm sorry about that and I have had some complaints about as much information as I threw I'm trying to you know get you caught up to speed at least to a good basic level of understanding and it's just too much to go over so but at least it's there you can go through those lessons as many times as you want to and you know, just pick up a little bit at a time if you need to I mean, just go your own speed all right but what we want to discuss is, you know, when you look up your character, usually their attributes, whatever attribute you're looking up, is usually part of a structure. Programmers will put that as part of a structure. And they'll put different classes in different sections of memory, but all together basically as part of that same base character. Okay? And what I mean by that, let's say, like, your character has a health value. Or something like that the character's health every time he gets hit now we got a one hit kill so he ain't really got much of a health value here but let's say if he got health magic stamina things like that uh, usually programmers put those values together they keep them close by each other you know for programming purposes and debugging purposes things like that you know it's good to keep related things together so when you can't find one particular attribute try to find something that may be related to it because usually they will be together in the structure see what i mean and usually health uh stamina breath is all together in structure but you also have other attribute values such as coordinates where he is on the x y and z axis if it's a 3d game x and y axis on a 2d this is 2d right here there is no 3d studio space it just goes up and down left and right we're going to be discussing that here in just a second and usually with coordinates you will have other attributes well how fast can he move in a direction how high can he jump how fast can he jump can he jump in an arc? Can he go left and right? Um, you got all these are represented by values, and usually they are together in a structure with each other. So it really depends on what you're looking for or where you're going to find it. Sometimes you can find these things rather quickly. Sometimes it may take you hours and days to find them, if you find them at all. So you always know that there's different ways to go about things different ways you can find these values other than just scanning up here for everything that you want so keep that in mind when you're value hunting you want to check other areas just go play around with things and you know when you start getting more knowledge and understanding on how games operate you kind of know better what to look for of things you can go try to kind of narrow things down a little bit to get you in the right sections of okay well you know if I'm dealing with the jump height here you know how high he's jumping and I find his jump value and I found his max how, uh, height right there we, we can also look for the flag bay that states when he's in the air when he's on the ground and we're gonna have to do that too we're gonna have to find that you'll notice that I'll link that lesson up in the upper right hand corner when we went over how to do a super jump and a fly hack. Is we want to be able to find the flag that's being watched that tells the game when we're up in the air and when we're standing on the ground. Because usually in a lot of games when you're up in the air, a flag will be set to tell the game at a certain point you need to trigger the fallback or the fallback down. Okay, but you know, a lot of times we try to find that flag bay to make the computer think that no matter where we're at, we're always on the ground, and that's usually where you can get you a good fly hack started. You know, there's other things that you may need to do, but that's a good base, and I always recommend finding that flag. It's there every time in every single game. It may not be zeros and ones, it may be fluctuating between 
two or three different values, but it's still representing the same type function. Okay, and that's what we're going to be trying to find, but the best way to find it is to find our coordinates. Now, on a 2D game map, you're going to have basically just a regular x-axis and y-axis. You will not have a z, because it doesn't go in and out in 3D space. And usually, a standard x, y, and z map is set up like this. x will always be your horizontal, which is left and right. And your Y will always be your up and down. Now, most games, most standard ways in math, you know, have the X axis start from its lowest and go over to its greatest. So anytime you're going to the left, you're always going down in value. Anytime you're going to the right, you're always going up in value. And in most standard games, Y, when you go up in the air, you're increasing the value. When you come back down, you're decreasing the value. Always and forever, wherever, X and Y intersects will always be your base zero. Okay, wherever they intersect will always be your starting zero. Now, in certain games, situations, or, or whatever, sometimes the Y will be completely opposite. Sometimes the positives will go down and the lesser values go up. So, and it happens to be that way for this particular game. The X is actually, or excuse me, I'm sorry, the Y axis is actually reversed. The negatives are going up and the positives are going down. You do need to keep that in mind, but usually in every single game, the X will always be negatives to the left, positives to the right. There may be exceptions to that rule, but usually not. Okay, usually not. Very rarely will you ever come across that, if, if at all. All right, so that's what we're going to try to find. We're going to try to find this X axis coordinate for our player because we know our y is going to be right there with it or somewhere around it because they're together so let's do that so what i'm going to do is we know that y will always stay at its particular value because we're not going to be jumping up and down we're just going to be going left and right which will only affect our x coordinate so let's do that now i always recommend when you try to find your coordinates always start on a float value are you always going to find it on a float value? No, sometimes it could be on a double. Sometimes you may just find it on a four value. Rarely in those cases, but it does happen. But I always recommend that about eight to nine out of ten times that you do this, you're going to find your coordinates on a float value. So let's go ahead and set everything up. I like mine to be on rounded default, and I like turning on simple values only. And I like having this boxed in as readable and writable. And we're just going to do an unknown value search. We don't know exactly what the value is at the moment. So we're just going to say that whenever we go to the left, it's at the lesser value. Whenever we go over to the right, which we're going to do, just go over to the end, we're going to say he increased in value. So we'll just go over here, increase value, and do unchanged. And I'm using hotkeys to do this. And we just rinse, wash, and repeat until we get down to a few we can look at and try. You see, they weed down rather quickly, so. And we got a few here, so let's just go to the right. And that's, that's usually a good number here, so we can... We can probably find it with that. So let's go over one. Oh, oh there we go. It weeded out our displays. Okay, good. That's what I was wanting. But this should be our X coordinate right here. So let's just just test it and make sure. When we turn this on, that may, that way cheat engine starts holding it at that value basically what cheat engine will do is just continuously write that value to this address just over and over and over again however doing this the game is still writing to it also so they're really kind of fighting with each other and you'll see that but the way we know we got the right value is he'll always go back to that value we froze it at so take a look you see how it's just kind of jerking but he's going back to that value so that's the game and cheat engine kind of fighting each other. So we know that that is our Y value. It's affecting our guy. Or excuse me, our X value. 
it is affecting our guide. The best way I like to go find these other values is I like to go to the uh, memory dump region. And basically you do that by right clicking and go to browse this memory region. And what we're interested in is the memory dump right here. This is what the computer is actually reading in this in byte forms and binary actually. But uh, let's go ahead and put this on a float. And if we take a look here, we know this is our X, and right beside it we see an interesting value. And that's more than likely our Y. Let's jump up and down, and we can see that's our Y value. So we got our X and our Y right here. So let's go ahead and add that one to the list. You see how we can find other values by just looking in the same structure? So let's add that to the list. And we'll just go ahead and label that uh, Y axis. That's our up and down. Very good. <clears throat> and we'll label this one our X axis. And tell you the truth, I don't really need my X axis. All I really need is my Y because we're doing a fly hack. And you remember what I said earlier, how these things are usually together in the same structure? Well, that's no different than that flag value I was telling you about. One where it's on the ground, it recognizes it, and one where it goes up. And usually you can find that within the Y. Uh, wherever the Y happens to be, usually you can find it there, whatever's up and down. So let's go back to that memory region and just use Y as our variable. But we want to put it on four byte because usually your flag values are going to be an integer. So we're going to put it on decimal and we're just going to kind of look around. We may find something, we may not, I don't know. So let's just take a look. And we're not really seeing nothing, so that's fine. So there's nothing really changing except for our Y value. But that's okay, we're not at a loss or anything like that. What we can do is see if maybe we can find our cap value. So let's go see everything that may be monitoring when we jump. And we do that by right clicking and find out what accesses this address. <coughs> Right now we're just playing around. We're just trying different things out. Something ain't working, we look for something else. And this is everything that's happening right now as he is standing still. Everything that's monitoring our y-axis and what's going on with it. So let's just jump. And we see things are stopping and starting as we jump up and down. So we know that our writing op codes are right here. And if you want to know how I know these are the writing op codes, you'll need to go watch that Back to Basics lessons. I go over that there. So I'm not going over everything again. But I'm going to choose this one because this is the last one it goes through. It goes through in order. And that was the last, that was the last writing op code it went through before it went on down to here. So let's go to this one. Let's go ahead and stop it and let's just kind of take a look around, see what's going on in assembly with it. As always know, there is always a cap it is looking at. When, that, when we jump up in the air, take a look. We jump up in the air, it's got to reach a certain height. And it's comparing that height to that cap. Say, okay, don't go any higher. It's time to fall back down again. And usually, you'll find that most of the time during a writing op code. It's writing our value is going down here and we just kind of take a look around at compares and things like that what's it doing well I get to messing around with a lot of these type values in here and you're gonna see me doing that and I'll go play with these different opcodes as well I'll go see and I look at my comments usually you get some good information in these comments also these numbers mean something Okay, they could be pertaining to our, our character, the way he jumps, the way he moves, because they're always usually together, somehow, some way. So I'll go play around. Well, what would happen if I went and played around with this value here, this 1.5? I know it's looking at our, our cap somewhere. And we got other values we can look at. But just to save a little time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click it, and I'm just going to copy that address. Now, this is a static address it's in the green so we know it's a static location so it will always be this address that 1.45 let's put it on the float take out the bracket and what does it do 
Well, the way we go test it is we go change the value and see if it does anything. I'm going to increase that to 2. Let's just go take a look and see if that does anything. Why don't you take a look? That is our jump cap right there. You see that? And how did we find that? We just messed around. We just take a look at some of these values, what's going on with them. And we see what's what's happening here. And if we look right above the cap, it's always looking at something like a flag value to let the game know that we're no longer on the ground or we're no longer standing. And we're up in the air. It needs to monitor something. It sets a flag to make us come back down. Well, what looks like a flag value here? We got several of them that look like a flag value. When I see bite pointers, those to me, especially when I'm dealing in a section of memory that looks like it's dealing with jump values, that tells me I'm going to put this back down to its normal thing here. And you can also find this flag value by scanning. Uh, you just have to, I'd recommend using speed hack and your pause feature when he's up in the air pause it do a scan when he's just standing on a collision field or a ground do a different scan change value or decrease value whatever you can find them that way but sometimes i'll just go play around with some of these things that look like flags to me and see if maybe that may be it it looks like it's looking at a flag value looking at a cap value it's loading a cap value writing a cap value and usually flags and caps together tell me that that is trying to be recognized as if it's standing on the ground or not, or standing on something or not, or it's up in the air. So what would happen if I go fudge around with some of these things? What if I, it looks like it's moving a byte into 7 c it's comparing that byte down here to 1, so if it's 1, do this, if it's not, do that. So what would happen if I change the condition? the compare or just change the compare itself and I start messing around with those see if that does anything take a look when I mash it it thinks he's always on the ground I can mash jump anytime I want to you see and I found that by finding one specific value then I just start going, playing around now this is where you want to start understanding assembly a little bit understanding how games operate how things are structured together are they always going to be slammed together like that no probably not you may have to do some back tracing but you know you want to take a look around and see say well that 1.45 has got to mean something this bite anytime you see a bite like that my, my first thought is a flag okay my, that's always my first thought what would that flag be doing what is it monitoring why is it comparing something why is it comparing it here well, it's comparing something to do something different when it's not that value. And if it's a flag, that means something different has happened. And usually if that's where you're jumping in the same area or in the same part of memory as controlling your jumping, well, that tells me that that's more than likely telling the computer when we're up in the air, when we're not. So if we keep making the game thinking we're always on the ground, it'll let you jump whenever you want to. Basically, that flag is controlling when you can successfully jump again. You see that? So all we had to do is just go change that one thing to a one. Change that compare, because that is a flag. That is being compared. Let's see if we can find that flag while we're doing it. And here's the address. You see how it goes to zero when we're just on the ground? Let me uh, take that back out. And this is how you would scan for it. You see how it's zero when we're on the ground, and then when we jump, it goes to a one. That one means not we're up in the air, I guess. Zero means we're on the ground. So we change the condition to make it think that we're always still on the ground. Because see, it was zero before. Okay? So basically it's saying this. When it's zero, that means we're on the ground. So if it's zero, jump if not equal. So it's only going to jump and bypass this area right here if it's not equal to zero. 
So we made it think it was equal to zero by changing the condition. I'm sorry, it's jumping when it's not zero. So it's always jumping over this. We're never running this particular program, which basically is telling the system that we've reached our max height. You see that? It's setting the max height. It's setting that into our jump, and it's making us fall back down to the ground. You see how those two work hand in hand together? In the air on the ground flags with the cap value of the max height. Those are the kind of things you want to look for when you're looking for stuff like that. Jump hacks, fly hacks, things like that. You always need to try to find that flag because even if you successfully modify your Y value, in some games it is a Z value that goes up and down, but you always want to find that flag value that tells the game if you're on the ground or in the air because it's still waiting to hit a max height. You could glitch your game out or it could automatically, like in uh, the Far Cry that we did when we were up in the air, as soon as it recognizes you're in the air, you just get this kind of waving your arms. He's just kind of flapping his arms around because he's recognizing he's in the air. So we had to find that flag bag, make it think we was on the ground so we could still walk and run. You see what I'm saying? So you always want to find that flag value to make the game behave like you might be still on the ground. I mean, no matter how you do that. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. So we have successfully found that flag value and the jump value. And now we can go hit all these different lines here. But we still have to avoid enemies. And you see what the enemies do when we complete it. Now they just guard the door. So we'll deal with that next time. Right now we just want to write a script. I'm going to change this back to zero. And we're just, all we're going to do is a direct byte manipulation. And we're just going to change that byte to 01. Which is, remember the bytes are just nothing but the instruction in byte form. So let's do that. And we're going to do an AOB injection. We're just going to call this fly one and we need you know kind of test these out make sure that they work and i put it in the wrong section i'm sorry let me put it on the compare there we go now let's do an aob injection on the compare itself so now we'll label that fly one and remember i went over how all these aobs operate in the back to basics i talk about everything this AOB scan is doing what these labels mean everything please go watch it if you're unfamiliar with that we're not going to be doing that we're doing a direct byte manipulation and we do need to save our register symbol you see now how my channel uh, basically works better when you already have the basics down you understand more what's going on if you went over that back to basic series right and we know that this here is that particular value that needs to be changed to one. So we're just going to change that and just have it set it back when it's done and we're going to go ahead and sign it to the current cheat table. And we'll just label that fly test. Okay. So let's come over here away from the enemy so we don't die and you can see we just jump like normal. This is normal. Now let's turn on our, our cheat. And what we want to do is make sure it just changes that to 1. And see, left everything the same, it just changed that to 1, which changes the condition to where it's always going to jump at 0 now. And take a look, it always thinks we're on the ground. It allows us to keep jumping. We can either hold the jump button, fly up, or we can just keep continuously hit jump button as we just do this. Every time we let go of the jump button, he's going back down. As long as we're mashing the jump button, that area of memory is being accessed. So we successfully got, a, got us a fly hack. Or an extended super jump. So but I prefer to call it a fly hack because that's what it's doing. It's, he's flying. We make him fly. We can just hold it and he can go up into infinity if he wants to. So that works. And when we turn it back off, does it successfully turn off? And we're back to normal. 
So I'm going to leave it here at this point in time and I will record another lesson for next week that we'll go over and we're going to see if we can get past these enemies and into that door where we're not dying every time. But you know, like I said, I wanted to cover this fly hack and kind of it does go along with the other fly hack that I made. And you can see that those same principles that I taught you in the super jump and fly hack apply here as well. And they apply to every, any game. And if something is not working for you, you can always try something else. But usually these things, if you can't find one thing, try to find something that's related to it. Because they will still, somewhere, will still be together. Okay? And you can find them that way. Or you can just use the conventional scanning. We could have found that flag scanning up here also. But why do it when you don't need to when it's staring you right in the face? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out a lot. Uh, please drop a like on the video if it helped you out. It really helps me out a lot. It helps cheat the game out a lot. I do want to thank my partners and my donators. These guys are the ones that keep cheat the game going. If it wasn't for their uh, kind support, uh, cheat the game would have went down a long time ago. So we owe you a huge debt of gratitude. If you would like to become a Patreon partner, please come over to the Patreon page. I'll have all the links for you down there in the description. Uh, also, come join us over at our Facebook page as well as our Discord. And we also have our website. We'd love to have you come be a part of us. Uh, we talk everything gaming as well as game hacking. So, And we have a lot of fun over there. We'd love to have you. So come join us if you can. But I'm out of here, guys. Next time, we're going to go over the collision so we can actually get through the door. And we're going to just be walking through our enemies. And I'll show you how to do that and how to find that in the next lesson. So you guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care. Thank you.